Hey YouTubers, in today's video we're going to take a look at what goes into creating a click track. Without wasting any further time, let's get at it. Alright, here we go. Uh, this is the default screen that you see when you come into uh, Logic Pro X. You want to select your software instrument and make sure that your instrument option is set to the Klopfgeist. This is what you're going to use for your click track. All right, what you're looking at now is the instrument, uh, the digital instrument, Klopfgeist. And here you've got a number of um, options to select from in terms of what you want to, to hear, what type of uh, Klopfgeist instrument you want to hear. And so you can see as you go down the list, uh, there are a number of different beep types that you'll have. Uh, for me, uh, I tend to find that the pluck seems to work pretty well. You can see that the tonality is up a bit, the dampening is down. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, we're good to go here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and update the name to click. We're going to update the icon. This is me just being a little more picky, but uh, you certainly can leave it as is, or uh, I like to use the little metronome up there. Go ahead and select that when you're ready. Here's where you're going to want to go ahead and adjust your tempo uh, to the given song. For this particular song, we're looking at uh, 80 beats per minute. You also have the opportunity to adjust the time signature of the song as well. So uh, we're going to make sure that that red R is clicked. That makes sure that we're going to go ahead and uh, enable our recording. Go ahead and click that record button when you're ready to start recording and know that you'll get a four count uh, into the recording. What I'm doing here is using a MIDI keyboard to uh, set the tones and I'm using them an octave apart. And so what we're going to do here is take a little bit of time to kind of normalize everything, if you will. If you can, you know, see there on the notes, some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. And so what I'm going to do here is simply try to normalize them so they are all even. Making sure that they're all starting on the beat. I'll shorten this one down a little bit. And then for our last beat, we'll go ahead and shorten this one down. Now we're just going to make sure that the velocity on all of our beats are the same as well. You could see that uh, they kind of vary in the, the 80s range. So what we're going to do now is uh, highlight all four of our notes. We're going to go up into the functions area. We're going to go down to MIDI transform. And you can see here a, a number of different options that we can select. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick that fixed velocity. And because everything is already selected, I'm going to set that to the max value of 127. Click operate only. And now you'll see my notes have all turned red, uh, which is indicating that they are kind of maxed out at the max velocity for a given tone. If I go ahead and reset this and start it again, you'll hear the tones. And at this point, I think we're just about ready to roll. What I'm going to do here is actually mess around with whether I want um, eighth notes or sixteenth notes. I'm going to attempt to uh, highlight these four, copy them, and move them over into another section, uh, another portion here, so the, the 1.3, if you will, section. And what this will allow for is, you know, typically songs that are usually that 80 mark or less, uh, you typically want to double up on just to kind of keep that click moving forward and so it just doesn't seem like it's dragging along so much. 
So what I'm doing here is just essentially doubling up what I had for my eighth notes and turning them into sixteenth notes. And we'll take a listen to uh, how this sounds together. Oh, you can see here I've got an extra one. I didn't need that. All right, let's go back up. We'll take a listen. All right, I think that will do for this video. And uh, we will move on next into adding our click tracks.